Well, hello there, everyone. I hope you are having a great day. I am coming to you under the shadiness of my Merlot Redbud here. It is another hot day, probably close to 90 degrees right now. I wanted to get out earlier in the day, but it just didn't happen. So here I am in the mid of the day in the bright sunshine. I apologize if the lighting is not the greatest, but it is still the beginning of August and I just wanted to take you around do my kind of bi-weekly walk and talk tour of my gardens to show you what's going on here in the beginning of August. I thought I would start you out under here under this Merlot Redbud and just kind of walk down this way past my incredible hydrangea and my winter gem boxwood hedge right here and just show you what's going on on this side of the house. My oh so easy red roses are in their second flush, looking pretty good. I did not go through and trim these back. I did not deadhead these this year. So they are not looking quite as good as they were last year at this time, but it's good to know kind of what they look like if you deadhead them versus don't deadhead them. But I just think it gives them a much tidier appearance if you deadhead them, but it's not necessary. The Millennium, or, I'm sorry, I think it's Serendipity Allium right in front of the roses are in full bloom right now. Pollinators love them and I love them. I really would like to split these and add these throughout some of the other areas of my yard. I think that they are so beautiful this time of year. I see a bee right there enjoying the blooms. They are all over this plant, especially in the middle of the day when this is getting full sun. Big pollinator tractor. I see butterflies and bees on it. Definitely a winner and the rabbits do not eat it. Looks like I'm about to get some buds on my Daisy Made Daisies, some blooms on my Daisy Made Daisies. And that'll be nice right in front of my Red Beauty Holly here. We're just going to walk down towards my main flower walk. And I'll tell you, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> we have been having such an issue with heat and drought. I'm in Zone 7B, Maryland here. And you'll see that my grass is crispy brown. And we had some really heavy rains come through. Um, a few days ago, and I'm going to show you what they did to my Rose of Sharon. And I think I see a hummingbird. Zoom in on my Rose of Sharon. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I have been seeing hummingbirds flying all over the yard this year, and I absolutely love it. It's exactly what I have been going for. So beautiful. So I was saying we have had such dry weather. These are my sedum, my Autumn Joy sedum that are looking good. And then all of a sudden it just downpoured for a couple of days. And my Rose of Sharon did not take well to that at all. This right here is a Thomas Edison Dahlia that is, has exploded in growth. I left this in the ground this past winter and it came back and just took off. It looks beautiful. So many more buds coming on the way. Just an outstanding dahlia. And there's the hummingbird again. Ah, they move so quickly, it's sometimes really hard to catch them, but I just, I love it. I've been seeing them all over. So this is my main flower border, which is looking just gorgeous right now, despite the um, somewhat destruction on my Rose of Sharon and on my crepe myrtle. Unfortunately, my crepe myrtle took a big hit from the heavy rains. I will show you. And I'm just going to move over here. I still see hummingbirds over there. It's so cool. So these are the purple pillar Rose of Sharon. And they were real tall, probably over 10 feet this year, only about three years old. And unfortunately, you can see they have flopped majorly. So they were nice and upright. And after the heavy rain, they just split in the middle and flopped 
all over the place. You can see them flopping all over my neighbor's fence right here. They are no longer standing up straight like I was, you know, hoping for them to be a nice tall head. So that is a real big bummer. I tried to go in and straighten them up, kind of push them back into place. Sometimes that has worked in the past. But I think that what I'm gonna try to do is maybe selectively prune a little bit. And then in the fall, we may just have to cut these down by like three feet just to give them a rejuvenation prune and see if that helps them for next year and maybe try to keep them at a specific height, like 10 feet or so, so that this doesn't happen, so that they're not as prone to this happening, I guess you could say. So that's definitely kind of a bummer and a downfall of these um, super tall rows of Sharon, but they still offer gorgeous flowers. I'm gonna bring you in closer to take a look. So I just am in love with the flowers on this plant. I think that the flowers are so gorgeous. Again, this is the Purple Pillar Rose of Sharon. It's a Proven Winners variety, but I'm gonna to try to, whew, if I can catch it, it's a little bit breezy. So it kind of puts off almost a reddish center in the middle, and then just these beautiful, large purple flowers all over the plants. They are later to bloom than summers of Sharon. They really didn't bloom until almost the beginning of August is when they kind of are in peak bloom. But the pollinators, you can see the bees flying around, absolutely adore them. The hummingbirds have been all over them. So in my opinion, one of the most beautiful hedges that you could have, except for this flopping issue. So we definitely are gonna need to fix the flopping issue. I guess I will start off on the right side here since I'm already talking about the Rose of Sharon. Bring you over here and show you that I have some Magellan zinnias in bloom. If you've followed me for a while, you know my struggle with rabbits, they have been absolutely just so intense this year just eating all of my zinnias many many other things but i finally am getting some magellan zinnias in bloom these are the shorter variety of zinnia they stay around 12 feet tall to 18 inches i guess it would probably be the max and just are a nice tidy option for the front of the border so i finally have some of those blooming in front of these debunk boxwood and then I also planted some desert sun sunflowers behind the boxwood. I had some desert sun over to the left of me. I'll spin you around real quick here. Right behind my Mystic Illusion Salvia, I mean, Mystic Spires Salvia, sorry, um, that I was thinking we're gonna get to be around six feet tall and kind of tower over this salvia. You can kind of see one peeking out back here. I'm a little hesitant to get too far in because of all the bees flying around, but let me see if I can grab it quick. There it is. It is a gorgeous sunflower. I cut a few of these small ones to bring inside the other week and they looked so pretty in a tiny little bud vase. But unfortunately, I don't think they get enough sun or something. The, the salvia is crowding them out because um, they got maybe four feet tall and just did not develop real thick stems, didn't get as big as I had anticipated. So my thought was that I would try planting my next round over here where it just gets a lot more sun. They're just a little more exposed, not as crowded out. So we'll see how tall they actually end up getting. I just was kind of desperate to get sunflowers at some point. So I know it doesn't look maybe the best behind the boxwood, but I have a very tiny landscape. So it was really the only place that I felt like I could stick them at this point. Right next to my zinnia patch, I have a patch of anemone that is starting to bloom. This is another proven winners. It's called Fall in Love Sweetly Anemone. <laughs> I can never say that word correctly. 
Um, they get real pretty pink flowers with an with a yellow center. These look a little a little fried or um, more ruffly than maybe typically, but they are just starting to open up and this will spread just throughout this whole little area here. I just transplanted them this year, so some of them are looking a little bit yellow. And then right behind the anemone is one of my favorite dahlias that is doing super, super well this year. This is a dahlia called HS State gorgeous open center dahlia that the pollinators absolutely love with this beautiful dark foliage is just amazing how it just contrasts with my limelight prime behind it and that green foliage foliage such a beautiful dahlia this is a limelight prime hydrangea something is going on with my pinnacle hydrangeas this year because they just did not grow like I was thinking that they would. Last year, this had huge blooms. I mean, way bigger than the size of my hand. And this year, they're not super big. And the same with my little lime hydrangea that I'm gonna show you down the way here. So I'm really not sure what, you know, went on with the hydrangeas, if it's because of the drought or what, but the blooms are definitely much, much smaller than last year. Coming around and down from my purple pillars, another favorite of mine is looking beautiful. These are raspberry ripple zinnias that I grew from seed. These were such a center last year in my garden super beautiful and one of the best things is the rabbits tend to leave it alone so all the perfusion series of zinnias the rabbits tend to leave alone for some reason they are drought tolerant they don't need a lot of water they're virtually fuss free just a great great zinnia to have in your garden super pretty i love the candy cane striped look on the flowers i think they are so gorgeous Right behind that, I have an herb pot that's doing well with some thyme and rosemary and a, a new sage that I tucked in there because of rabbits eating my other herbs. And I have a real small patch of gomfrina that I have some different patches sprinkled throughout that has yet to really take off. That's a strawberry fields gomfrina with real pretty red blooms, blossoms on it. A daisy that is kind of out of bloom and all down the way, I have these four patches of black-eyed Susans that have really struggled this year with the drought and the heat, I think is what it has been. I've been struggling with them splitting in the middle all season and just drooping and not looking great. I do think that they need split very badly next year, but I do believe that the hot weather with the lack of rain has definitely affected them as well. I just put in some patches, some clumps of coneflower. This is um, powwow, powwow pink coneflower that is still pretty tiny and kind of losing its color at this point. And then I did put in this um, fire perfusion zinnia that unfortunately is struggling. I don't know, I keep having to come out and give it water. It's lost a lot of its blooms. It was a beautiful orange that I'll show you down the way. I have this um, redemption elephant ear that again, I almost lost twice. So it's bouncing back for me. And then just a kind of uh, repetition of this, um, not lamb's ear, I always wanna call it ladies mantle <laughs> with um, cat mint, just lining the front of the border. Now these are all new and they should fill in beautifully over the next couple of years along with my orange blues nefofia right there in front of my black eyed seasons will give a gorgeous pop of orange along this border as well in years to come another one of my favorite dahlias is this mystic illusion dahlia with the bright yellow petals and the open center and the dark foliage another pollinator magnet and that dark foliage provides so much nice contrast 
I have another little patch of the gumfrina that has yet to bloom back in there. And as we go down the line, I have this patch of lamb's ear. This is the Helen Weinstein lamb's ear. I love it. it. Does not flower. It does not spread like crazy like the traditional lamb's ear. I do plan on splitting this next year also. And I have this little lime hydrangea that again has super tiny blooms compared to last year but is looking decent overall. I had that staking in place last year because it was so big and so heavy. And this year I feel like I barely need it. So again, I'm not sure if maybe it's because of the drought. And also these Rose of Sharon do tend to soak up a lot of water and keep this whole bed pretty dry. So that may be another contributing factor. And I just, have a lot of repetition going on with my black eyed seasons and daisies and coneflower that the rabbits have eaten off. <laughs> I'm hoping in years to come to really get those clumps to get a lot bigger and more rabbit resistant. And this is one of those fire profusion zinnias that I put in um, just this past week. Ooh, a dragonfly flying around too. It's looking okay. The plants I got at my local nursery were definitely struggling. Um, they had been sitting around for a while and just really needing to get into the ground. So hopefully that begins to kind of bounce back for me. We have some nice cooler temperatures coming and rain, rain in, for the next like three or four days, which would be amazing. And let's see, this is another patch of Gomfrina. This is strawberry fields and I have one little bud starting to form. So this will look like a strawberry, literally. It'll be bright red with some yellow speckling on it to resemble the seeds. So I am excited to see that. A struggling cat mint that I had transplanted. I'm hoping next year is a better year for that. And then my redemption elephant ear that is not very big. I'm hoping these get a lot bigger next year. I'm going to try overwintering them in the ground as they are rated down to a zone 7b. And I'll show you this is <laughs> um, just kind of a testament to the weather. This black eyed Susan is dying out in a couple of different places. You can see the brown the browning dead branches right there. I need to go in and cut that out. And then just this open center where it's just kind of collapsed and just not looking the best. So that is definitely probably partially with because of the weather. And I have these beautiful wee white hydrangeas that are on the crispy side of things. This is what happens as the season goes on. They get a little bit crispy looking. I could go in and cut the blooms a little bit to try to get some new blooms to push out for the year if I wanted to. And behind them, I have a patch of zinnias that are finally kind of beginning to take off. My hope is that they get taller than this bench and start to peek out through the grates right there on the bench. And one that is blooming. Yay, so pretty. And one of the stars of the show over here in this corner, I love how it looks with those purple blooms, is my Twombly's Red Sentinel Japanese Maple. You can see that it's definitely um, getting a little more green through the midsummer here. In the spring, it turns a brilliant red, and then in the fall, it turns a brilliant red but just a gorgeous tree for a small space. Only gets about 10 to 15 feet high and four to five feet wide. So great, great option if you have a tiny little yard. And then I just have a bunch of foxglove planted behind that that are spent and done. And this patch of caramel hookera that is really doing well right here in this little kind of part shade area right tucked back in here. So that is the main flower walk. I'll take you over quickly and show you over here by my crepe myrtle bed. 
There are so many bees buzzing around and butterflies. I feel like I'm having to dodge all of the insects right now, but this is looking real pretty despite the fact that a lot of things did not go as planned with my sunflowers and my dahlias. I had four uh, Melina Fleur dahlias planted in this bed and they all got eaten down by the rabbits. So that's one clump right there. And then I planted all of these zinnias in front of the salvia and, oh, hi Rosie, <laughs> she's trying to get in front of the camera. Um, they also had gotten eaten off by rabbits when I was gone on a vacation. So they are very delayed and I still need to go in and replace some of them with some new ones that I have grown from seed. And this Mystic Spires Blue Salvia is fantastic plant. This is its second year that it overwintered in the ground. These are actually, this is three, three individual plants that have exploded in growth. They are almost as tall as me. I'm 5'4", so probably about five feet tall. An absolute magnet for the bees. They are on them all day and all night until it gets dark. Really, really a great attractor for pollinators. And I had put in this purple hyacinth bean vine that I am so excited did not get taken down by the rabbits. Last year they munched them all off, but this year it is starting to grow up my obelisk here. I can't wait for this to fill out this whole obelisk and to see the late season flowers and seed pods that it gets. It's gonna be super beautiful. And of course, once my zinnias start to bloom here in front of the salvia, I do have to go in and kind of clean up a little bit. The salvia is flopping a little bit from all the rains as well. I need to see if I can stake it up any to kind of support it a little bit better. I do have another zinnia blooming. So two tall zinnias and a handful of Magellan zinnias so far. This is just a pretty pure white. It's gorgeous. All along the front here is my winter gem boxwood hedge that is looking fantastic. Oh, there's another hummingbird. Oh, there's two of them. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're up there by the green giant. So pretty. I just turned around and they were like right there. See if I can zoom you in quick. There. Oh my goodness, they just move so quickly. Okay, I'll see if I can get them again. <laughs> but I'm very, very pleased with this boxwood hedge. It's just looking fantastic all season long. I'm very distracted by all the hummingbirds. I just love it. It's really what I've been going for in my garden is just to be surrounded by pollinators, bees, butterflies, hummingbirds. I, I, I just absolutely love it. So anyway, coming around here is our Tonto Crepe Myrtle that is in full bloom. It was looking fabulous, but unfortunately, for some reason, this really doesn't take well to the heavy rains. It, last year this happened, it just starts to get weighted down and droops. It has real long branches that tend to break and snap. Unfortunately, we had two that snapped. I'll show you on the other side here. This is one of my Limetta hydrangeas. This one is looking fantastic. I think because it gets more shade than the other one that I'm about to show you, but there is virtually no browning on the blooms. A beautiful hydrangea. I have this coleus down here that also is looking great. I wanted it to kind of mirror the color of the blooms on the Tonto Crepe Myrtle, and you can see that I think that it mirrors that color pretty perfectly. It could maybe contrast a little bit more, like have a little less green in it, but I can always play around with that next year if I wanna try these again, maybe a slightly different color. And then this is the other uh, Limetta that I was telling you about. It gets more sun, 
So this is kind of what happens. I did go through and trim this up a little bit, hoping it'll push out some new fresh blooms, but it does get pretty crispy, just like the wee whites that I was showing you back there. So if you're in hot climate, you could try putting these in more partial shade to try to protect them a little more, kind of like the Annabelles that I'll show you down in my shady border. And then we just have our patio over here and come around and this is um, a denim and lace Russian sage and I just did a little rearranging to this bed. This is not permanent plantings. Um, as years go by I'll continue to fiddle around with it but I had a midnight masquerade pensamin that I picked up this year that I just uh, stuck back in there that is not blooming but the foliage on it is a beautiful kind of deep burgundy color with some green in it super pretty and then I have a whole little hedge of some raspberry ripple zinnias all along the front here that are beginning to take off and behind them I grew this basil it's a purple basil Sorry, I was saying Rosie started barking, so I put her inside. But I grew all of this purple basil, this is purple opal basil from seed. This one is absolutely taking off and looking beautiful. The others are pretty slow <laughs> to take off. They are kind of all behind my raspberry ripple zinnias, creating a little hedge of dark purple foliage that I'm hoping will eventually get taller. And then I just stuck in a bunch of zinnias that I directly sewed into this bed that I've been trying to um, rehab <laughs> since the rabbit um, attack and adding in a few new ones here and there. And then I moved this dahlia from over here by the window well just into the center of the bed. It is a creme de cassis and Thomas Edison. I think I might see one yeah i see one bud starting to form there this bed gets a little more shade from the crepe myrtle than a lot of these plants probably like but i just thought i would give it a try i've talked about wanting to add in a bird bath and kind of work my plantings around a bird bath in there so that is the crepe myrtle bed and i forgot to show you you can see just how misshapen our poor tree is now. I need to go in and see what I can do about it, but we lost these really like substantial branches right here on the side. There was one right there and then another one right down there. So we have this kind of big gaping open hole, which is very sad in our crepe myrtle. So Oh, there's always always something to be dealing with right <laughs> in the world of gardening and it is very very hot out so I'm gonna take you and um, bring you along into my little shady corner over there there's not a whole lot going on not a whole lot of new but we'll just take a quick walk and see what's happening the sun went behind the clouds a little bit I think we're actually supposed to get some rain pretty soon so it feels a little bit cooler, but I'm gonna try to hurry just so that I don't get caught in the rain. This is our shadier border underneath these river birch trees that are our neighbors. So we have a little bit of shade to work with in our small property and a little bit of sun. We don't really have too much full sun in places. Most places are part sun. So it is a little bit of a challenge, but this is the border where I tend to stick a lot of my shade plants and it's really been a work in progress for a couple of years now. These are just some um, Patriot Hosta I had split from my front porch um, area and then a camellia that we put in this year that is still looking really great. It is an April Kiss camellia with beautiful double pink flowers in the springtime. And I have these two obelisks in this bed for right now. I don't know if that might change in the future, but for right now, I think that they 
they fill the space really nicely. Oh, I do see a little bit of rain. So we'll just try to hurry through here. <laughs> and this is where I have my Annabelle hydrangeas that really do well under these trees. The trees protect them from browning and they also protect them from flopping too much, which can be an issue with these Annabelles. They tend to have weaker stems than like say the Incredible. But if, as you can see, we had those heavy rains that literally broke my crepe myrtle and my Rose of Sharon and my Annabelles barely look touched. So I always say this, but I think the key is to maybe plant them underneath a tree, some large trees to protect them from the heavy rains. And in front of them, I have this big swath of impatience that last year, they were huge. This year, they have been struggling. I think one of the big reasons is because I did not use Osmocote this year, honestly. Last year I used Osmocote in all of the holes. This year I have just been using an organic flower tome and I am about to go in and give them some organic quick release uh, liquid fertilizer. It's like a fish emulsion based fertilizer, I believe. So um hopefully that gives them the boost that they need to really take off and put on a big flower show for me i have two clematis two pikmink clematis growing on these obelisks right now this one is doing the best because it gets more sun but it's out of season it's out of bloom for right now and then just some hellebore right down here that i put in this past year I also have a ghost fern that I rescued from another location in this bed that I'm trying to bring back to life and protect from any rabbit damage. And then some foxglove back there that I had added, some columbine. I'm hoping next year gives me some blooms. A wiggles and squiggles hosta that looks so cute. I put that in just a few weeks ago. And this was, this is a Roseanne geranium that I also put in a few weeks ago that I am hoping will uh, bounce back for me next year. And some brilliant autumn ferns. The middle one has really taken to the rabbit damage quite badly and some wildberry hugra I'm also trying to salvage. <laughs> so a lot of rabbit damage back in here and just some hosta I have repetition of a wee hosta that has that really fun squiggly foliage and an elegans a blue halcyon that has largely lost its blue color at this point in the season that happens the hotter it gets the the more that waxy coating kind of melts off and reveals that green underneath and then a huge Ooh la la hosta right behind our service berry here that is kind of hiding but very very beautiful and my little hedge of sweet tucker viburnum is actually doing really well back here too it is definitely raining now but it feels so good oh so refreshing so i'm gonna just stay out here and try to finish up even though it's, it's just slightly raining but um, I have this, another denim and lace Russian sage. I wanna do a little hedge of three right in front of our Wajelia right here. And then a uh, beautiful Laura Petalum and two incredible hydrangeas flanking the gate. And my sun patients are looking gorgeous over here. This is the compact red candy variety. I just love them. You really add a nice color right under this incredible. And I'm gonna show you real quick and then probably call it a day, just what I have planted in here. Is it raining, girl? Yeah, it's raining. <laughs> so over here in front of my, this is another hedge of sweet tucker by right, Burnham. I had these zinnias that again, sustained a lot of rabbit damage. So I'm trying to kind of rehabilitate them. <laughs> so there's nothing really to show except for a small patch of agerinum down there that I put in. And same thing kind of over here. I had um, split these sedum. This is more um, autumn joy sedum from my flower, from my patch over by the air conditioner unit. 
that is in their first year. So next year they should look really beautiful. A sensation honeysuckle that is largely out of bloom has one bloom at the top that is probably going to be spent pretty soon. And then they get these real pretty red berries when they're out of bloom. They kind of add some nice interest. So that's really pretty. And then um, I have uh, another oh so easy red rose that is really looking gorgeous. I just put this in this year. It has taken off like crazy. Very beautiful looking in front of my Dragon Lady Hollies and a little patch of lavender I grew from seed. And then this is what I added this past week was just some alternating patches of ageratum, another, or two more, no, three more fire perfusion zinnias. And just kind of repeated that down the lane and a rescue patch of cornflower <laughs> down there. So definitely this area is kind of a holding bed and a work in progress but I am gonna say goodbye to you guys since it is kind of pouring at this point in time I hope that you enjoyed walking through my gardens with me today and I hope that you guys have a great week and I will talk to you soon all right bye mm -hmm.